you close all them X hamster tabs. I don't know what that is, but okay. <laughs> uh, that's, a joke for, that's a joke for a very specific group of people. It is, indeed. I, I don't know what you're talking about. No, you don't, Zach. You're a good boy. Yeah, you're, all you're, the hamsters I used to date? Hey. Oh, Okay. Bam! Booty, booty, booty. Uh, all right, I'm going to start the timer. We're going to get this thing going. Doody do. Let's do. Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 272 Woo-hoo. of the Camcast, the podcast that decided to celebrate freedom by not getting off of its couch for the entire three day weekend. That's how you do it. Damn right. That's how I do it. I am Mike, dear leader, doc taste, leader of men, herder of cats, guy coming to you from the other side of the wall, water heater, all sorts of fun crap back there, Christmas yes. tree thing. Yeah, buddy. From the bunker, as it's known. God, yeah. So I will eventually get back to the pod table. It'll be yes. fine. I just kind of like having this desk here. Yeah. Anyway, I am joined, as always, by the one, the only, our allegedly good boy, the chairman of the boards, the good Colonel Eddie Dean himself, Zach Lords. I'm awaiting trial. <laughs> it, it's true. Again? He is. <laughs> First time for me. I get to go to court. For what? Trespassing. Oh, uh, cool. Yep. I'm trying to take photos. Uh, He's over there preparing some sort of, I don't know, prison you, thing. You rolling your little. Getting my doobies, aka napkins. <laughs> hey, he came back with dinner. Hey. Finally, after this yep. low, this last decade and a half. Oh, tis, tis a low and long decade indeed. <laughs> I was going to uh, say was uh, we told him to bring back the family pack, and he brought back a, a combo. So yeah, it uh, your budget's tight these days with the Rona. We gotta yeah. we gotta spend wisely. Exactly. That's why you've been thumbing your way across the country. It is the one and only Uncle Touchy himself, our long estranged pizza dad. Hey, hey Chris Jansen. Hello. It's good to be back. Hell boop, yes. Boop, 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 boop. Yeah. Oh, right. Miss you guys. Love uh, you. Joey wants to know if I have any under hood pics of Rhonda. Well, I'm gonna have to go find those that later. Sexual. That's weird. That's a random request. Is there well, a thread related to that or uh he he owns a Cressida. He so does. Yeah. he does? He has a Cressida? Yeah. Joey. Yeah, I didn't know that. Did I know yeah. that? I didn't know that. He just got it. Yeah, we got it a few weeks ago. So Ooh. I saw Joey for like a month and change ago, actually. So for his last time at this apartment because he has since moved. I saw him for his last time leaving. Weep. And uh, as he was getting in his car, I started singing Sarah McLaughlin "Arms and the Angel" or whatever it is. No, you got to sing "Boys to Men." <laughs> it's so hard to say goodbye. Damn. Yes. Dang. And then you pour out whatever you're drinking on his hood and then double birds. We, 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 we both had beer lights or Bud Lights. I should have done that. Beer lights. Beer lights. That, is, uh, that is beer lights. That yeah. is something. There was literally something called Beer Time Light 30 oh. that I missed out on buying. I was always just like, I'll get it next time. I'll get it next time. And then it went away. Yeah. Uh, and it was one of those. It was just t- like... It, it was legally called beer. That was about it. Anyway, uh, follow us on all of the social medias, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter on the race weekends, which there seem to be a race weekend every weekend. Yeah. I'm there getting spicy, desperately trying to get noticed by WTF1 Senpai, <laughs> doing my best, creating memes on the fly. It's not working out so hot, but whatever. We're at Cam Automag on all the social medias. Go ahead and give us a follow. Let us know you're out there. It's always fun. Uh, support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash camautomag. Uh, any dollar amount is greatly appreciated. God damn. All right. Thank you, Brandon, for commenting on my post. You're welcome. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah. Patreon.com, any dollar amount, <laughs> patreon.com slash camautomag. Any dollar amount is appreciated. But if you want the best bang for your buck, $5 a month is what you give because that gets you gets you into the super secret shenanigan shit posting facebook group where we're actually doing some fun stuff in there i will randomly right. send you things you get access to bonus content you get the podcast a day early and every week we are live streaming this thing on youtube so you can actually see us see what we're doing yeah. hop in the youtube chat and get spicy 
live and you could tell us to bleep off. Exactly. Stuff. Yeah. Hey, fuck off. Whoa. 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 Coming in. Coming in hot. That's got a spice. Oh, that's, had to. That's, a, that's, that's got a, a spice that's, you pay $5 a month for. Patreon.com. That, uh, that, was, that was a tribute to, to Gavin whenever yes, Trent was. came in there. Hey, you, Trent. Ah, uh, yes. Love, Gavin, love which, you, Trent, wherever you are. Uh, He's camping. Yes, he is. That is why uh, the shadowy billionaire is not here with us. And also, speaking of Gavin, so we have made the executive decision. Zach, the title of Excitable Child is all yours. Yay. We are transitioning Gavin to the drunk Frenchman. So... There it is. I feel honored. Yep, indeed. <laughs> you should be. <laughs> the drunk Frenchman. That's fitting for Gavin. I think he's earned it. He's grown. He has. He has. He's and grown. every time we've been playing Forza together, he has been drinking. So Excellent. Excellent. That's the way to do it. Is That's the format to drink and drive. Correct. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, speaking of, since this is a fun little segue, uh, we play Forza, or we were playing Forza on Twitch Tuesday, but now... Since it is a new month, we must switch over and include the other group of patrons and shenanigans members that we have. So we're going to be playing a lot of stuff on the PlayStation 4. This week, we're going to be firing up GT Sport starting <clears throat> to, uh, Twitch Tuesday starts 7 p.m. every Tuesday. Go ahead and head over to twitch.tv slash camautomike if you want to watch. Or shenanigans members, we have the big thread where we all have our gamer tags and everything in there. Go ahead and add me. Add us. It'll be fun. It'll be terrifying. Don't at me. Don't at me. Add me. Yep. I need to put, I'll put mine in there. Everybody yeah. add me. Yeah, there you go. So get ready for disappointment. I mean, some of us were born ready. Part, part from, <laughs> from the course. I, yep. I, I'm going to champion that on your gravestone. <laughs> good, good. Be, re- be ready for disappointment. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's a good way to go out, though. Be ready for disappointment. God. Oops. Uh, who was right? The Mormons. The Mormons were right. <laughs> just, just imagine getting up there in the pearly gates, and there's Saint Peter. Just, uh, oh, not you. Just like I can't. Again? I can't Again? say no. And I'll be but like I don't meme. want to say yes. Yeah, I'll be like that meme of James Franco. First time. <laughs> First time, huh? Yeah. First time, huh? Ah. Uh, Anyway, uh, let's see. Oh, guess what finally showed up? My sweet <clears throat> Cam Auto bag. Yes! After like say, two months my, from Latvia. My rent check? Is that what finally showed up? My re- I owe oh, you a thing, little bit. It's, it's in the mail. Yeah, that done. don't worry. The last one bounced and it still has yet to return to Earth. So don't worry about sending the next one. No, yeah. My, uh, my Cam Auto Mag backpack showed up. It is delightful. Matthew Bennett got his. Slapped some pins on there. Put it up on the old Instagram. It's pretty Dude, tight. He's, he's my savior. He's, he's out there living. He's living the good life. Yes. But yeah, if you want to join me and Matthew in having the ultimate hot person summer, head over to camautoswag.com. Get yourself a new hat, shirt, the shorts, the flip-flops, oh. and the backpack. The whole wardrobe. Yeah, you're fucking good to go. You are dripping in that hot boy swag, head to toe. Head to toe. I have to mm. do it now. I coined the term. I have to be doing the dripping. Yeah, you got to. I, I need to rope at the bop. All ready to go. Do yeah, some man. Dabs. I'm Dude. waiting for a dab. There it is. is. So 2009 or yeah. whatever year that's from. I don't even care. I don't know. 1987. <laughs> what year is it right now? I have no idea what year Who knows? Is. But yeah, camautoswag.com is where you go to get all of that stuff. And uh, yeah, get, get your drip on this summer. <laughs> Live your hot person summer. Because that's, that's what we need right now. Yeah, we need a lot of hot boys. A lot of hot boys, a lot of hot girls, a lot of, a lot of hot non-binary folk. Yeah, and you hot know, whatever you identify as. I don't care. Exactly. Yeah, just be your hottest self. And just do live it in the sh- cam swag. Well, Damn what right. You're not hot like me. <laughs> I mean, listen. Somebody finds you hot. I find your I find your personality <laughs> hot. I need I that right now, uh, Mike. Thank you. I needed the pickup right now. Thank you're you. welcome. You're welcome, bud. <laughs> you're so six. I'm, you're six foot nine of all hot. There it is. So wherever the hell how tall you are, you're I'm a giant. Six six, but six nine, I could make so many more jokes. Nice, yeah, nice. It's a very nice height. Oh, very nice. <laughs> uh, anyway, while you're out there throwing some money around on the old internets and uh, helping out some very awesome people, head over to SteadyBroke.com. SteadyBroke Clothing, our longtime sponsor, put a bunch of their awesome, affordable stuff 
in your cart. Use coupon code CAMAUTO15 at checkout and save 15% on your entire order. Just because you're broke doesn't mean you can't live your dreams. Steady broke. Steady broke? Yep. So, uh, before I dive into the catching up with everyone thing, I do want mm-hmm. to say we are going to be giving something away. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, uh, Eric Teddy, a photographer in Brooklyn, car enthusiast, he started making these uh, zines, these uh, eight six zines, because they're awesome, and he was selling them, and uh, 100% of the proceeds goes to Black Lives Matter. So, I picked up two, one for me, and one for you. Oh. Yeah, it is a pretty sweet zine. Like, right. a bunch so of... H- how do I apply for this giveaway? You so, can't, because you work here. <laughs> no, but it's one of those... <laughs> Wait, you guys are getting paid? Yeah. <laughs> 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 no. uh... Hey, just feed me, that's all I need. That's really what really where it comes down to but uh yeah no like we all have those fun stories of just like hanging out and bullshitting with uh, friends at the car meet so i want to hear you like your best story where like your best night at a car meet i don't care if it went to like a second third fourth location but just like your awesome car meet story car night story and best one that i find i'm gonna give this thing i'm gonna send this thing to and also uh, probably a couple cam stickers. So, Ooh. yeah, there you go. Maybe some other random shit too. So, there you go. Uh, I'll give you a week. So, we'll close this thing out next Monday. So, I'll announce it uh, tomorrow on the old things. But if you're watching, Chris, uh, you have an opportunity to win this really kick-ass zine. So, it's full of one of the greatest cars God has ever given us. The Corolla, the 86 Corolla. So there we go. All right, Zach, you're facing criminal charges. How's that going? Um, so I I have a court appearance in uh, a month and a couple of days for a trespassing charge. Nice. We talked about we talked about it a couple of weeks ago. Um, so that's fun. Um, I'm trying to think. I I I, I got to live a Tokyo Drift moment. Hell yeah. We the were, Tacoma. Uh, no, I almost rolled it that time. That was a second time. <laughs> this was a second, a different time. Um, I was hanging out with our everyone's favorite Asian Mike, and uh, we were in his M5 because that might be going away soon. According and, to Instagram, it is. The guy's on his way. Yeah, hey. He keeps telling himself he's not going to sell it, but he needs to. He needs to. You and I both know he needs to. Yeah, do it, Mike. Yeah, but yeah, we Mike. took it out for like a one last hurrah. Um, those tires didn't stay stuck to the pavement for most of it. It was there were mostly not no traction. And then we found a parking garage and we proceeded to try to drift it up the parking garage. And then we hit the top level and there was a very, very attractive uh, security guard standing there. There you go. Trying not to laugh watching us two dumbasses roll up in a black BMW. Yeah. Did you get her number? We tried. We really tried. Nice. You're like, um, <laughs> but it didn't. didn't. No. You're like, I'm always down for full body cavity searches, just saying. You know, I'm just putting it on the table. Okay. I'm just I'm, throwing I'm just throwing it out there, ma'am. I'm I'm pretty sure Apex Security, that's part of their uh part of their agreement with uh, standard procedure. Yeah. You know? mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah, that's fun. Nice. We're living some dreams. Nice. There you go. Um oh I was gonna hang out with some friends this weekend, but they all fell through. <laughs> well me included. Well that was for today, so yeah. I, I tried for Sunday too. Yeah, I don't do I don't do anything on Sunday. No, you're you're, yeah. you're a good member of your faith. Yeah, which yep. is Formula One. There it is. Uh, let's see. AJ digs your hat, Brandon. Yay, Cruiser Gear. It? Check them out. Good stuff. Local company. There it is. Not sponsors, so I can't really talk about them. <laughs> yeah, but you shouted oh, yeah. them out. That's good. That's all that really yeah, matters. Yeah, they're good stuff. I like their stuff. It's cool. This is the this is like traditional Toyota yeah, coloring as well. Yeah. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, nice. Iron Man or Ian Iron Man what was his name? Yeah, Iron Man Ivan Stewart. Yeah, there yep. we go. There you go. Yep. Uh, many a many a fun night spent in the Pizza Hut playing that stand up arcade. Oh game. my gosh, so good with the steering wheel and everything. Oh so yeah, the good. steering wheel that really didn't do anything. Just no, yeah, just, whip it. Just like a million whip turns. It. Yep. Yeah. Just whip it. Yep. 
just like stand it's, on the gas and whip it and then whip yeah. it. It's like, yep. that, it's like that Russian driving video with the girl where she's teaching how to drift. It's the whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah pretty much, except like we were, except we were like video. eight and nine and just hopped up on <laughs> caffeine and pizza. Yeah. It's glorious. Dr. Pepper. Mm. Uh, yeah. Anyways. Well, speaking of people who should be getting hopped up on uh, pizza and soda, we got some birthdays. Hey. Happy birthday to Kevin Panter, father of Rhett, driver of a turbo NSX, a turbo mm. wide body NSX. Mm. Yep. Uh, JP Pulgarin, James Jameson, Ryan Salazar, Nick Steckel, Dan Barker, homie from way back in the day, Alan Best, Parker Lambert, Cat Villanueva, and Ryan Thomas. As in the, put in the chat if you want to watch that, Brandon. Got 30 it. seconds. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll get to that later. We might throw that. You know what? We'll throw that in the. Uh, in the show notes, which I need to move the move the zine. <laughs> and it's correction, it's Ivan Iron Man Stewart. It's the close the enough. Mm, not at the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> I love the the watching the live chat. It's so great. Anyway, yep. sorry. Cool. All right. So there we go. Now, guys, are you ready for all sorts of news that Trent threw in here? Yes. I uh, haven't even pulled up the agenda yet. Let me look at that. Okay. Go ahead and pull up the agenda. Uh-huh. While you do that, I'm going to go ahead and just start launching into this. So just do it. feel free to jump in where you can. So McLaren gets a much need financial boost. Woo! Indeed. Courtesy of the National Bank of Bahrain. Oh. Seems like a weird place to give. To, yeah. Well, seeing as like probably 60% of their car sales are in that country. That's, yeah, yes. that's fair. Yeah. yeah. And makes it's, sense. And a lot of these big national like banks, specifically in these very oil rich countries, they are more than willing to just throw like 150 million pounds or 185 million dollars, which is what they put into McLaren. That's really not a whole lot in no, the grand scheme of like a national bank or, you know, like a sovereign holding fund or whatever. Yeah, guaranteed. They literally found that in the couch in the yeah. front lobby of their bank. It's like, oh, you oh, wait, let me look. Oh, there it is. There yeah. you go. <laughs> uh, there's like, well, which which P one did we pull this out of the glove box in? Like, I can't. Right? There was, there's fourteen in the the bank parking lot. So yeah, yeah, that's yeah. But that so. it, just in the nick of time too, because McLaren Zach Brown was saying if we don't have something by July seventeenth, yeah, they were really they had no cash to pay anybody. Yeah, this was July 17th, so. Yeah, I mean, they were the first team to furlough staff. Carlos Sainz and Lando took pay cuts. You know, they had some layoffs and everything. Well, even but, on the car sales side, I mean, yeah. no one's no one's buying brand no. new exotics right yeah. now. So oh, Lord, no. Nobody's buying brand new anything right now. No. Well, well, except they're buying for full-size trucks. trucks. Yeah, yeah, full-size trucks, 0% but for 72 months. 0% for until the day your children die. Yeah do it yep but That's yeah no so right there. exactly so yeah yep so that is definitely awesome glad mclaren yes. got what they needed yeah so, they got a little something else too but we'll talk about that later. we'll get to that in a minute i'm sorry just it's all right oh don't worry them in. don't worry and we have i have that as like the last thing in the racing section because i'm gonna blow through like everything that happened before then and a very important announcement from our friends at NASA Utah, a very awesome announcement about the Utah Six Hour that's happening saw that. first weekend of August. I saw that. Yeah. So we'll so. get to that in a minute. But first, out goes the Kia Optima, in comes the K5, which is a very Stinger inspired front wheel drive based, optional all wheel drive, up to 290 horsepower sedan. In a world where everybody is going away from sedans, here is Kia giving us an insanely handsome. It looks really good. It looks so damn good, and the one and those the LEDs like they're taking the the LED game to a whole new level. Oh yeah, like look this at is, that. This is a good looking car, both inside and out. So, mm. but what here, the fuck is that name though? The K five. Like it's, it's a just, new, it's a new blazer. <laughs> I, I, all I want to say this sounds like a like a or a shitty '80s movie about a robot that found intelligence. 
a there's no such thing as a shitty 80s movie that's about a robot that finds intelligence johnny five is alive so yeah fuck you. um <laughs> how dare you second the name of yeah jeez come on circuit man. like god in heaven I don't know. It does seem, it seems like a, a, it's obviously a paradigm shift in their naming conventions. Yeah. So I will see I, where it goes. I, but. You know what? I just realized, so Kia's trying to go for the, the European uh, sedan market with, with this, the styling. And that's kind of where, where most of the sedans are being sold are a European manufacturer. Right. And K5 is a very European sedan name. Yeah, it's well. Most of their most of their designer base is from Audi. You know that, yeah. right? I yeah, mean, he has stolen a lot from Audi and Volkswagen. So I mean, yeah, like they. That's why they look good. Yeah, so, a lot of people have come over from, like I can't remember who it was, but somebody I think Hyundai, poached the head of M division years ago. Yep. So yeah, like it's, yeah, that's why suddenly all these all these Korean cars are now just like, oh my god, they look amazing and they go even better. Yeah. So, it's, yep. it's a renaissance. I love it. I like it. I think it's a great, great car. I'm, I'm with you, Zach. I'm not sure on the name yet, but yeah, it's a little maybe weird. Maybe it'll be a, a, a K3 instead of the Forte or something. Yeah. I don't know. It's a little weird, especially considering they just debuted like last year, the Telluride SUV. So it's like, I feel it's a little weird to start just going away from yeah. actual names when you already have everything established with an actual name. Uh, anyway, uh, here are some numbers. Uh, base engine is a 1.6 liter four cylinder, making 180 horsepower and 195 pound feet of torque. The GT models, which is what we're going to be complaining about when they don't show up on the used market because nobody's buying them because America hates sedans. Yep. It is powered by a two and a half liter turbo four, 290 horsepower, 311 pound feet of torque with an eight speed dual clutch auto. Get you, to get you to 60 in 5.8 seconds. Mm. Those are some really good specs. Yeah. It's like, right there with the Honda Accord, the TRD Camry. Mm. Yeah. And this thing I this thing looks better than either of them. So I, I do look forward, or I'm not looking forward. I will be sad the day in about five years when we do the dead sedan challenge again, and this yep. is on that list. Yeah, <laughs> when we have to say rest in peace. Yeah. Well, Undoubted history repeats prime. itself, my friends. History repeats itself. So everybody will get off uh, of this truck kick. <laughs> For the weekend, yeah, that's the fun ride. But yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think sedans will see a renaissance in the next few years. I hope, anyways. I Fingers I crossed, own man. one. That's the yeah. same zero to sixty time as my GT. It's just mine's a VW. So Yeah. yeah. Your sounds like an angry Wookiee. It does. Mm. I love it. <laughs> Uh, anyway, speaking of European manufacturers by way of Asia, Volvo does the most Volvo recall I could possibly imagine. Yeah. They recalled 2.1 million vehicles. This includes pretty much every 06 to 2019 S60, S60L, v, V60, XC60, V7, you know, just a whole bunch of stuff. Because Basically their entire lineup. Yeah, basically their entire lineup for those 13 years. Because... There is a steel wire connected to the seat belts, and that can weaken. Nobody has reported any accidents or injuries because of this, but since they are the ones who did create the three-point safety belt, they kind of need to, you know. Right. This, I, I pref definitely prefer these kind of recalls versus the don't spray water on your Honda Ridgeline or it will blow the fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. Or don't turn the key on your GM, whatever, because it will turn off and kill you instantly. You know, yeah, just, I like this. I like the proactive approach much better than the reactive. Yes. Yeah. I mean, Kudos, also, Volvo. Kudos. Also, shout out to BMW issuing a recall for one vehicle that nice. one time. Yeah. <laughs> that was hilarious. I think it was like an X5 or something. Yeah, and you know, the like, guy who owned it was like Robert Todford. And he was like, oh, Bava, my BMW needs a recall. <laughs> yeah, it was just like, wait, what? What? Hold, hold the hell on. That's very specific. Yep. Well, speaking of fun European stuff that can also be tuned up, all uh, the crazy X5s. Uh, by the way, I saw somebody somebody yesterday as I was leaving my girlfriend's house to come home. I was behind somebody in an X5, just a standard X5. Right. But they put the M badge on there oh. and also like cc badges on there i'm just yeah. like what 
Closed are captioning. You, They're just. Are, like, are really? you trying to tell me this is like an M, an X five M competition, like Ooh. a thing that I chat doesn't does, exist? Yeah. No, 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 I thought that does exist now. It's just disgusting. There's the M there's the M five competition. I know that for sure. I'm not sure about the X five competition. I don't know. Yeah. Chat, figure maybe, it out for me. That's what you're maybe, there maybe for. I'm having a fever dream. But wait, maybe. you're sure it wasn't our favorite Asian Mike Hung driving yeah. that because he yes, likes to, No, not unless Mike has he transformed. Yeah, not unless Mike has turned into a rather attractive blonde woman. Mm. Yeah. If so, so, Mike, give me a call, buddy. Hey. Hey. Ooh. <laughs> anyway, uh, Maserati has taken hey. a new engine. Uh-oh. The Natuno motor. Oh, yeah. Which is all Maserati, not Ferrari, mm. not FCA. Ooh. It is a twin-turbo 3-liter V6. Mm-hmm. It'll make, it'll debut in the new MC20 supercar or sports right. car or whatever the hell it's going to be Cannon and in bridge. there it's going to make 630 horsepower sweet sassy molassy that's uh, some hp right yes <laughs> yeah it's wow. still it'll rev to 8,000 rpm and they're also going to stick it in other sports cars and suvs and in those it's going to make 530 or 540 horsepower damn i have some concerns though <laughs> uh Maserati. I mean, other than it being a Maserati to yes, run. That, that's the yeah. exact issue right there. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. Motors aren't great at building it, or aren't great at building engines. Not really. I mean, when Dan posted this, uh, shout out to Dan Shalinski because he did post this in uh, the Shenanigans Facebook group before it popped up in the agenda. I think I made the joke. I mean, this is either going to be great or it's going to be the butt of every Maserati slash Italian car joke for the next decade. Yes. Yeah. I think it's given good. the track record, it's going to be great up until it needs the timing belt service at 3,500 miles. <laughs> well, uh, well, I want somebody to buy this and rebadge it as a, a bi turbo. Oh, yeah. I mean, somebody has to. Yes, and uh, AJ he said, "Wait, what about something?" I think he was talking about the one car BMW recall. Yes, literally one BMW needed to be recalled, so they had to issue. And it wasn't just like a you know, oh, just could you bring it back? They had to actually legally they had to mm-hmm. issue a recall. They had to do that, but it was just for one guy. It was like I think it was like a white X5 or something. And it was for one thing because that one car left the factory and it was the only one that did. Then it had like a very specific problem, but something that could be remedied at the dealership. So, yeah, (laughs) they're basically like, uh, yes, we were calling one X5M. Steven, could you please take it to the dealership? If I were that guy, I would have been like, no, you just increased the value a hundred fold on this one and only one of a kind BMW. Mm Yeah, like broken. Yeah, like the problem wasn't going to be something that would like it it would have been dangerous down the road. But like in the immediate it was really more of an annoyance. So they're just like, could you just please just come on in? That's gold. Yep. Uh well, speaking of things that are going to increase in value exponentially because they're now dead. Lincoln Continental. Rest mm. in peace. Gone too soon. Yep. Again, again. <laughs> this is okay. time three, right? something like that yeah this one this iteration came back in 2017 it is going away as a 2020 model sales were less than 10,000 units last year so not great not great and they all went to uber drivers so i mean yeah like that's with people not going anywhere there there went that market so. exactly just like the weird fleet sale that is uber and lyft sales but well, speaking of other big oofs, uh, new car sales numbers came in for the second quarter of this year, and oh boy, oh, oh no! Mm-hmm. So let's. Here's how bad they are. Volkswagen down twenty nine percent. Nissan combined between Nissan and Infiniti down forty nine and a half percent. Toyota. Down 34 and a half. Wow. GM down 34. FCA down 39. Hyundai down 22. Oh, boy. So what I'm hearing is buy a new car now. I mean, like... They'll they'll, they'll give it to you. They'll just give it to you. You're kind of hearing that, but they also don't have new cars because the factories were shut down. Yeah, like nobody... Yeah, dealers, like... Everybody thinks dealers are putting a ton of cash on the hood for these cars, but not... Not really. No. 
because you know you're you're not buying a car because you haven't been to work in two months yeah when you over know. what is what are we at like 15 percent of the entire country is unemployed right now did Something we hit there. that high i know Something we like, crested 10 percent. oh yeah no i think we've don't worry we're Which is leadership insane. is uh, neon orange leadership is doing a fantastic job. Yeah, Cheeto is just driving it straight to where he wants it. So uh, whatever. The big wet president, the man who has never failed at anything. Specifically, he didn't fail running a casino, the thing that pretty much lets you print fucking money. <laughs> yeah, and he didn't bankrupt three of those. Oh God wait, yes. Oh, hey. Anyway, uh, you want to hear how uh, Europe's doing? The European yeah. brands? Yeah. How, how BMW down 39.3. Rolls-Royce oh. down 38.4. Porsche not... down 20. Mini, 41 and a half. I mean, this is billions of dollars. Billions yeah. gone. Like, Wiped out in a quarter. Billions. Oof is a great way to determine what or way to describe what has happened. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a big oof. Yeah, Volvo was down 15.3. So that's like, that's not terrible. And somebody actually posted positive numbers. Oh. Mazda yeah. oh, in Mazda. June. So they were down 17%, but in June they were actually up 10.9%. Wow. So, like, that's, I mean, gigantic Kudos. oof. Yeah. Gigantic oof. Yeah, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. It's only going to get worse. <laughs> oh. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, there were some, like, some people were saying, well, we're seeing it's not as bad, like, June wasn't as bad as we thought it was going to be. Yeah. So like that's, you know, when you hear, when you have to couch it, like it wasn't as bad as we bad. thought it was going to be. Yeah. yeah. That's is. not, that's not great. I mean, it's better than, well, I'm going to go ahead and file this report and then throw my chair through the window and then <laughs> jump through said window. And, yeah. And catch up to the chair, sit for a little bit and then die. Yeah. yeah. So there is that. Now let's get into some uh, our favorite kind of news, Tesla news. Good news. Good news. There it is. Uh, so it was actually not this is not bad Tesla news. Uh, That's a first. An increase of two and a half percent more cars were delivered in the second quarter than compared to first quarter. So that's not you terrible. Can, you can do that when you don't shut down the factory, even though the yeah, government you tells fucking, you to. <laughs> fucking defy the law you're like nah i'm not gonna do that no and Pass. people again i'm going to say this i say this often enough that i shouldn't have to repeat myself but stop looking at elon like he's he came from nothing his yeah. dad is a fucking emerald magnate wow and his mom was a supermodel like his mom was the cover girl right or she's a brand ambassador for cover girl oh yeah. lovely yeah. yeah so like he's not he's not doing terrible and he has never done terrible no, like and he got hair plugs, like, probably yeah. six, seven. You watch that video of him when he buys the McLaren F1 yeah, for his so then bad. wife. He is yeah. totally bald. And now oh, it's yeah. like, oh, magic hair. Where'd that come from? Hey, man, the system's working for him. It's got to work it, for it, somebody who it may. Good. It's, good yeah. it's got to work for somebody. So, uh, anyway, yeah, so there it is. Uh, you can mostly attribute this to, you know, China and the Model Y and all that crap. So, that's... That's not bad. It's impressive considering the apocalypse hit. Yeah. But hey, there we go. All right, guys. We have one, two, three consecutive Dodge stories. And they're all kind of fun. So starting us off, they are going to be making a one-year run Uh of what Trent is lovingly calling the Dodge Hall Cat. Mm. They're putting the Hellcat running gear <laughs> in a Durango. What? Going to make 710 horsepower, tow 8,700 pounds, and get to 60 in three and a half seconds. I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it? Is that serious kind of logic? They're just like, everybody loves I, these crazy I saw, horsepower. I saw a meme, and it was just like Dodge planning meeting. Like, yeah. well, should we come out with a new car? No, let's put a Hellcat in something. Let's put a Hellcat. <laughs> Let's bring back the neon and put a Hellcat in it. <laughs> Seriously, God. That's what's, that's what's next. Man. Front wheel drive, though. Yep. Anyway. Front wheel drive Hellcat. So, yeah. So, there is that. That is insane. And I'm glad that they're finally doing that. Nice. Because 
this it'll sell though that's the thing we'll oh, see yeah it. no i i eagerly look forward to getting run down by one of those fucking things so no, it's not a it's not a mustang let's be honest okay you'll be all right no but it's a giant suv and people from your neck of the woods yes have a tendency to drive those things and drive them poorly what do you mean you people oh you didn't say that okay no i did not <laughs> um <laughs> what else on the dog lineup hasn't been hell catified <laughs> That's a very good question. What is what does Dodge make besides the dir- They're still making the caravan? No, that no, that no, officially no, they, died. They just okay, killed that. Okay, so off. okay, so it's they've got the Durango, they've got Durango. the Charger, Charger, the Challenger, Challenger, the Cirrus, and the Intrepid. <laughs> yep, there it is. There it is. God. I wanted a Cirrus so bad when I was a little kid. Oh, Stratus. Stratus oh, was the Dodge version. Oh, the Strat, baby. But Cirrus was the Chrysler version. The well, Stratus I'm gonna, I'm was a cool Dodge looking website right now. Yeah, you do that. We're going to talk yeah. about this thing real quick. So, yes. um, the Demon gets is going to be running around with a fake ID. going to be called the Dodge Challenger Superstock. It gets all sorts of Demon bits. New suspension, smaller brakes, smaller wheels, drag radials. Makes 807 horsepower. Shifts later than the Demon. There's the 309 rear end. Gets to 60 a quarter of a second quicker than the Durango. If I were a Demon owner, I would be so pissed off because it was a limited run on the Demon. Well, I'm thinking this, the Superstock, is literally like, I want to do NHRA Superstock drag oh, racing. So it's just like, I mean... But all the de- all the demon owners are going to buy this anyways because they're all just like rich middle aged men who are just like holy crap I gotta have that too I know? gotta anyway Zach you were um, so excited. the caravan is still on the website okay but, but the journey is the one we missed ah the journey all right but what I really want to see is a Dodge branded Pro Master with a Hellcat engine I'm sure internet somebody. Or, or the Promaster City, the smaller one that looks kind of like a, whatever the, that, that looks like a, I don't know. Yep. Well, let's see. AJ, I got to click this link for you. See what that super stock is going to do. I think it might come with the Fender Arches. But something that will definitely be built on the wide body platform is the Charger Red Eye showing up with 797 horsepower. A top speed of 203 miles an hour. Because like who, are they, who are they competing against? Chevrolet is not even making sedans anymore. Ford's given up sedans. I mean, yeah. they're just doing this because it's fun, and I kind of like that. Yeah, they're just Dodge doing what they can. So, yeah. which, I mean, shout out to them. It's awesome that they're doing this, but, I mean, just hell yeah. <laughs> Go them. Go them. Uh, and speaking of some fun, crazy, kind of who is this for sort of thing, <laughs> the Mazda 3 Turbo was supposed to debut in a couple of days. Actually, I believe on the day this episode releases to the public, yes. But Mazda Mexico gave out the de- the details Uh-oh. on the 4th of July. Ooh. Yep. Makes the same power numbers as the 6, 227 horsepower, 310 pound-feet of torque. Ooh, 29% increase over comparable models, so mm-hmm. paying nearly a 30% premium just to get the turbo. Uh, it will not be a Mazda Speed. It will just be a turbo Mazda 3. Oh, they're ditching the, the Mazda Speed nomenclature? Well, so I don't think it's necessarily like... Gone? Well, yeah, so I think they're probably just waiting for something, sort of. Because we've been but, getting a lot of like hints and teasers to like a resurgence of that name. Well, yeah, and there's also like a Mazda three TCR car, so yeah. Mazda Speed three TCR car, I believe, floating around. So, huh. you know, that's that's gonna be pretty. I mean, that's that's cool that we're getting a fun turbo Mazda. Mm-hmm. I would like to see a a Mazda a Speed three come back. Yeah, you know, I think I like with this. where I think with where Mazda's at with their. Uh, engine their chassis and everything i think it would be a, a good time to bring that thing back see what yeah. happens throw your hat in the hot hatch ring again baby bring it back yep and speaking of things coming out according to an australian publication there will be a new ranger raptor in 2021 yes it's gonna be powered by the 27 eco boost yes 
and North American engineers are working on it. Uh oh. So it's speculated uh-huh. that in the year of our Lord, 2022, assuming we haven't all died, imploded, which we're heading towards. <clears throat> exactly. <clears throat> yeah. uh, it will show up stateside. So, yes, finally. So- I don't think anyone is surprised by this because we all kind of foresaw that or foresaw this, foresaw this, foresaw this, foresaw this, For, forsaken, forsaken this, forsaken <laughs> this when when we got the ranger back here mm-hmm. uh, because we were all like, well, we're not going to get it with the new body style. We're, gonna get it with the... we're not. We're not going to get the new ranger. We're going to get the old ranger. Yeah, yeah. That also Which... has a raptor version in Asia and Europe. But yes, yeah, yeah. like yeah, like we're. Ah, uh, America. We think yes. we're on the. T- we really have this thing where we think we're just on top, but we're I mean, well, we as enthusiasts know. And chat, you can back me up on this. We're not. We get some fun stuff, but yeah. really, all the fun stuff goes other places. Yeah, yeah. In fact, let's. I'm just curious if this did anything for Ford's stock. Oh, it was up. It was up 2.3 percent today. So. All right, there we go. Good job, Ford stock. It's now trading at $6.20. Sweet Jesus. And then you look at, I don't know, Ferrari, which is publicly traded, $176 a share. So just a slight difference between the two. One makes millions and millions of vehicles a year. One makes 7000 Sunglasses. <laughs> and yep. Pirellis. And, and, well, not Pirellis, but Puma shoes and yeah. hoodies. And I'm pointing at myself because I'm the idiot buying them all. I don't even own one. I don't I mean, I can you're see still, you're just an there? aspirational owner at this point. Yeah, I'm Behind just. You, is that them? I'm pre douchery. Oh yeah, over hey. here on this side. Yeah, that's. Oh, and there's a bed. <laughs> Sweet. Because <laughs> this used to be the guest room, and so oh. I don't have a Murphy bed, so I just yeah, laid it up uh, on this side. But yeah, there's a my my Ferrari bed. collection over there. Yeah, yeah. My bed. Yeah. Ew. Gross. Okay. I don't actually sleep on this bed. Anyways. Gross. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so we're at the section where we get to our question of the week, and uh, this came up last week, oh, amongst so many other things, including uh, Chris giving us more tour instead of motor. Mo- motor. Yep. Uh, Don't worry, great. I've got it, got it all in the notes here. And also the idea of giving away broken Tesla Model X keys at Halloween instead of candy. I still got mine right here. Uh, I've got I've got one upstairs and I got one down here, which is hanging out for Trent. So uh, anyway, no, it was uh, because Zach drove a Viper. Like actually got to drive that thing and experience it. I've been driving it. it for a while, but I got to put some good miles on it. Yeah, you got to experience uh, it outside of its natural habitat. Canyon roads. God, yeah. And uh, yeah, Zach came to the conclusion that that is a hateful vehicle. Something that some of us have already come to that conclusion. <laughs> so... I asked our listening public what was the most hateful vehicle they've ever driven. But before we get into that, guys, what is the most hateful vehicle you've ever driven? Something that when you were driving it, you said to yourself, my God, whoever designed and built this thing hates me. That's why it's here. Okay. I'll we'll, we'll bring it up. Brandon, go first. Okay. So mine is is a very famous and iconic car. Being a child of the 80s, this is a car that you knew, even if you weren't a car guy, because of a certain trilogy of movies that came out featuring said car. And this car, of course, is a DeLorean, DMC. Uh, (laughs) By far, the worst experience ever. I don't even understand it. So I, I will not name the person whom I worked with on this, I, we agreed to rent this person's uh, DeLorean to a digital marketing um, uh, trade show that was going on here in Salt Lake. And the theme was, you know, kind of like DeLorean back to the future oriented. And so it was perfect to have a DeLorean right there at the front. So this person forgot about the, the rental totally. I had arranged everything. He's like, oh, I'm out of the country. Would you mind going and grabbing the car? And I was like, cool, I get to drive a DeLorean this will be an experience. So yeah, so of course I did. And it was cool. It's a cool looking car. I I mean, we all know this, you know, the going doors, the stainless steel, it's low and wide. And man, getting, getting into the car was my first clue at how little they cared about just building this car. You could see nothing. You're basically laying down. You are (laughs) laying down. You can't see anything out the side. You can't see anything out the back. You're laying down like you are in a race car. 
Yeah, you really are. You're like laying down. Was and I'm like, okay. Or an auto. This car. was a manual. And I'm okay. six foot four, so I'm a little bit shorter than you, Zach. It's six foot bajillion, whatever you are. You'd still fit. It would be a no, little tight. I have sat in right. and uh, moved a DeLorean around our shop and have worked on one. So I'll let you finish, but I got some ah. too. But man, I drove it from the Utah County up to Salt Lake County where the trade show or the conference, it was a conference that was going on. And so on the freeway, I'm getting tons of thumbs up, right? Everybody, it's a head turner for sure. But I'm like, holy crap, the front end doesn't know what the back end is doing. And it feels like it's connected. Yeah. And it feels like it's connected with twist ties. Like the whole chassis is just twist tied together. And like any kind of reaction that you do is the worst input I've ever felt in my life. No power. The sound was actually pretty good because this one had a, like, I think a straight piped exhaust, which is also what led to its demise in my <laughs> opinion, because we all know what happened to this specific car. It's now a meme uh, across yes. the internet, the burned up DeLorean. I drove it nice, and I parked it in my garage and I noticed the heat after parking in my garage. I actually popped the, the engine bay and oh, put a fan nice. there to let the heat cool off because it was so hot. I was like, this thing is going to catch on fire in my house and I'm going to have to buy this off this person. I don't want to do that. So I'm not surprised it, it caught fire and, and, and burned. But the clunkiest shifter I've ever experienced, the clutch was crap, the brakes were shit, the gas pedal, I don't even know what it was connected to because you'd mash it down and nothing would happen. Yep. But that's just the it's anemic good. GM power that's in there. So it is by oh. far oh, it was the a worst GM. car no, it wasn't Jeep. It was Peugeot, Renault, oh. and Volvo. The PRV, baby. Oh, well, there you go. That's that's the combination. The great trianon of hell is what that is. <laughs> and uh, do you know what the throttle's connected to? My butt. Literally fucking nothing. Yeah. Because it's, it's a it's a Bosch K jet. Oh wow, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it was the worst car, and I had to drive it back. And after like the return trip, I'm like, this is not fun. I hate this car. It is absolute total shit. It drives super stiff too. It was like not a comfortable ride and that's not a sports car that's a gt is what they you know designed it for to fit a lot of cocaine and to go on grand tours mm -hmm. so yeah that is so. if if you ever have a, an opportunity to drive one do it because it is literally the worst car ever made and this one only had thirty thousand miles on it and supposedly had a full restoration we know that not to be true but no um so I think it was literally, maybe it's that example because it was sat in a barn for 20 years and had nothing really done to it. That's what a 20 year old car park drives like. But man, I'm basing, basing every DeLorean off of that because it was total shit in every way, shape or form. Don't, if you can drive one, do it just so you'll know how crappy it is. It's just the worst. So I want to elaborate a little bit here because I have driven DeLorean, not to the extent you have by any means, but it is by far one of the most uncomfortable cars I've ever been in. Granted, I am of an extreme height, but still, you can't see anything out of it. Your head's in the headliner. The seats are like, they look like couches, but they're not comfortable. Like they're just, and the shifter is loose and sloppy. The throttle does absolutely fucking nothing. It re to, to rev the red line, it takes like six fucking minutes to rev the red line. <laughs> it does. And the, uh, my suspension was bouncy, so maybe it was something different between the two cars, but it's just like bad body roll. It drives like it's like a fucking uh, donk car or something. Like <laughs> yeah, mm. yeah. And you, you stomp on the accelerator, you sit, 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 sit. Then it squats the rear end, and then nothing happens. Yes. Yeah. Um, I just, I've never experienced a car that had the front end so detached from the, what was going on in the rear end. It was just like... I, did, I didn't insane. get speed in my this my, my driving example, so I, I I couldn't talk about the disconnect there, but I could imagine it. And um, why they catch fire is actually the fault of the K jet system. There is a gasket inside of the fuel distributor that fails, and it runs f fuel all the way down the car, all the way uh, down the engine. That's that's the most common issue fire. Um, oh, like I was trying to think of a better example of a car that I've driven that was more uh, as hateful. And I, I know I've been in more hateful cars. I can't think of one right now, but our Viper. So our Viper, of course it's a Viper, which is already a hateful car to begin with. Mm -hmm. But there's something wrong with the suspension. We, we haven't figured out yet. We're gonna take it to somebody who knows more about suspension than we do, but it's floaty. And it's, I've never been in a car that has so much 
potential for bounce oversteer. Which, in a Viper, is the last thing you fucking want. Yeah, definitely um, not want that. But any kind of bump, it, you you feel like the body and the wheels are separate. They're, 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 they're different entities in while it's bouncing. And we finally found a solution, which is when you're in a corner, stay on the throttle, because uh, when, when there's power being put to the axle, it kind of tightens everything up and it squats it the loads rear end up. a little bit. Yeah. Um, but that car, just like the shift, I, I drove it again this weekend. I drove it back from Mexico. Um, so I, I got on the highway and got some fun speeds again as well, too. But like the shifter just gets so fucking hot. It's unpleasant. And you you can't see out the back because, you know, the, the B pillar is this fucking wide. It's four, four feet, uh, sorry, two feet wide. And it's just a wholly unpleasant car. Uh, I'm hoping Jackson would chime in here because he also had an opportunity to drive it as well, too. But oh. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that car will kill you. I funny story. I almost died in one. <clears throat> going oh, no. up the yeah, going up the can. You guys remember Lambo Rob? Vape. Yeah, that no. he was a, a bedazzled Jean guy. He's still around. I think he has a Huracan now, but he used to have a, a twin turbo Gallardo. I think he still has it. Underground racing, the orange one. Oh. Anyways, prior to that, he had a Viper, and he invited me to go for a ride as we were going to go up, rip up the canyon with Jr's NSX. Remember when Jr had the NSX? And then our other buddy had a 355 Ferrari, which are both mid-engine, precision-built yeah. handling machines. <laughs> and then there's and the then, giant fiberglass penis that is the yes, Viper. that is just literally a truck frame with a freaking V10 slammed into it. And this one has st- stiff suspension, so that's weird that you have. It's the same generation that you drove the 505 horsepower. Yeah, we, 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 we have third after- gen or whatever fourth gen. Yeah, oh nine. Uh, ours yeah. is aftermarket suspension, but I don't know what the fuck is wrong with it. Weird. But anyways, he he. I should have taken this as a the, the hint not to go for a ride with him up the canyon. He's like, oh, hey, by the way, I just got it back from the, uh, the, the, the shop. They finished rebuilding it after my last wreck. I was like, your last wreck? And he's like, yeah, I've crashed this twice. And I was like, oh, shit, here we go. The bedazzled jeans would have been yeah. my first sign of like, no, yeah. we're not doing this. Not, not. Yeah, well, that was the thing back then. You know, when you had money, you put it on your back pocket with bedazzled. You know, That's the, that was, this was when back you, in like 09 or 10 or whatever. Wanted, when you wanted people to know that you had money, but in yeah. the grand scheme yeah. of having money, yeah. You, yeah, you didn't have money. But anyways, we got, he broke it loose going up Provo Canyon. And all I saw was Canyon Wall coming towards me. And I was like, all right, this is how I go. Sweet. And so after that, I was yelling out the corners and telling him to break. And luckily he listened to me because he was like, because I was like, dude, I'm not going to let you do that. Break! And then he would break because he was trying to catch up to the NSX and the Ferrari, which were blowing him away because they can handle, you know, and yeah. everything. And so we got up to the lake, turned around, and I was like, can I ride with someone else? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yeah, great um, cars if you're going like this. Yeah. So the thing I want to mention too with my Viper experience was we're not, I know he's not listening, but we're not telling the owner I did any of this. Um, that car doesn't like donuts. And I, so, so I, I did donuts once and it was like, it was like, it was fine. It wasn't a huge ordeal. I did it a second time and it was just mad the entire time. Like it, 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 would, it would like, wouldn't break loose. And I, I don't understand that. Like, I can break that thing loose at the top of first gear and the top of second gear and the top of third gear, but I can't break loose in a... It, it, it was embarrassing. I had people watching me, and it, it was just like a... Eh, and then then need smell clutch. Eh, then need smell clutch. I'm like, what the no. fuck? Yeah, I would, I would almost blame that on the suspension and rip out whatever's in there. That sounds yeah, like crap. I, I, we're taking to have someone professionally look at it, but hopefully we'll have a solution. Yeah, oh, cool. there we go. Well, let's see what our listeners had to say. Ben Allred, occasionally I had to drive my brother's 2000 Chevy Cavalier. To date, I've never driven an, in a more uncomfortable comfortable vehicle, nor one that felt so untrustworthy or deteriorating as a car. He drove that thing into the ground until the lethargic automatic transmission failed, and I didn't want him to replace it. I once changed the brakes on it after he came to me because they were grinding. They were grinding because he had worn through the pads months earlier and worn the rotor down to the fins. Obviously, he paid for new rotors as well, and luckily he's learned, and I've never seen his brakes like that again. Wow. Yep. Then from Ryan Betts, a 1984 Jeep Cherokee with a carbureted 2.5 liter AMC inline four and a five-speed manual failed to hold 65 
in fifth gear on I-15, had to use fourth. Ooh. It was a buddy's, and I think what I hated the most was how much money it screwed him out of, along with the fact it got low teens MPG and if you, and broke if you looked at it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, Ryan, you need to tell me more stories about this car now. Yeah, that's just... Oof, and I commented, I'm just like, yeah, no, it's terrible. Like, yeah. even more so because it was screwing your buddy. Yeah, that's a, just an electrical nightmare, too. That's, yeah. That's... Let's see, over in uh, Shenanigans, we've got some stuff. Let's see, also asked a Shenanigans question, but you guys mixed in some stuff here. So let's see, AJ. Hmm. I would have to say any quote unquote economy car that was built between 1990 and 2010 and especially detestable, no matter if it was Japanese, American or Korean, they all came in the same four colors. They all had interiors made of recycled gladware and none of them really had any redeeming qualities other than they got okay ish gash mileage and they couldn't, and they didn't cost you two limbs in your firstborn son. Mm. Let's see Brandon Kuhn. The most hateful car I've ever driven is a first-gen Dodge Neon. That hot garbage can garbage itself all the way to garbage town. I never owned one, but I dated a girl who did, so I had to do all the work on it, and it was just bad. The only thing that came close was my 99 Lumina, which just drove like a couch, but even basic maintenance required major disassembly. Oh, man, the Lumina. That's a NASCAR car, though. Come on. Oh, yeah. Uh, let's see, Devin Creasy, most hateful car slash vehicle I've driven is probably a four-cylinder TJ Jeep or four-cylinder Fox body, non-SVO. The Ooh, only thing I can remember about them is the same thing, a low rev limiter like a V8 with none of the torque or power. <laughs> yeah. Well written, well written. Let's see, Matt Barker, 2000 Mitsubishi Eclipse convertible, more chassis twist than a wet noodle. Mm. Dan Chalinski, my current and most hateful car is my wife's 65 Mustang. It is a mashup of 60 to 70 performance and custom parts, a 200 cubic inch inline six with three single barrels and a progressive linkage, mm. a GM transmission and keep the clutch. It does not like it. And I can't wait to fix it and get a modern Barra in six speed. And then I do believe I had somebody weigh in when I shared it on my, my page real quick. Ah, yes. Jan Gurday. Yaris, the only good thing I could say about it is that it was easy to parallel park. Ah. <laughs> yep, Ooh. there we go. Well, folks, if you have a, a hateful vehicle that you have driven, feel free to uh, drop it in the comments when this I, I thing goes up. I had a quick up. second runner up. Okay. Slat six duster. Yeah, that'll do it for you. Yeah, yeah. Just a boat with no power. Yeah, yeah, mm. that, that will do it. Overweight so. and asthma, asthmatic as well. Yeah, it's a single barrel slow Yeah, Ugh. Mm. Ugh. and ugly to boot. Not a, yeah. not a good looking car. I, 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 I don't know. Duster didn't, it, didn't they mostly have the tonneau roof? <laughs> yeah, in that era. Uh, mine, mine was a, like black, uh, black with a good looking interior. It was a good looking car. Oh, okay. Yeah, but not not a fun oh. car. Yeah. Well, the DeLorean's a good-looking car, and it's not a fun car. Yeah. 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 So, perfect. Anyway, moving on real quick. So, we're into uh, the racing mongooses segment, where we talk hey. about all the racing stuff. And, hey. like we teased earlier, big announcement from NASA Utah, Hankook Tire is coming on board to sponsor the Utah 6 Hour, and they really want you to drive in it to the point where... If you get two full sets of their F200 racing slicks or Z214 DOT race tire directly from them, they will pay your entry fee into the race. Free racing just by the tires. And so all but two classes that are eligible to run in the six hour, they can run whatever the hell tire they want. Yeah. So there are two classes where it's a, I believe it's a spec tire. So, or it's just, I think they don't necessarily offer a tire for that. I think it might be those weird little like open top prototype thingies, but yeah. they are offering the top three finishers are eligible for contingency. And it's a pretty kick-ass contingency winner in class gets a full set of tires. Nice. Second place gets a pair. Third place gets a single tire. Nice. Yeah. So that's awesome. 
you know, we will post uh, some more, some more info, but basically the long and short of it is you got to get the tires before the race. They have to be paid in full. They're going to have special markings on them. So, you know, they know that you were running them. Right. Like I said, you have to buy two full sets of them and you have to buy them direct from Hankook Motorsports. The email address is info at hankookmotorsports.com. And you put Utah six hour in the subject line and say, I would like to buy these tires. And there you go. Nice. That's uh, that's kind of tempting. I mean, I don't know what class my GTI would fit in, but I literally pulled it in the garage this morning and put it on jack stands. It will be running by Friday. So that is one of those. It is a, it's basically like a power to weight thing. So we just got to strap that thing to a dyno, do five consecutive runs. Ah, okay. See where you're at. Nice. So I'll do it pre-tune and just low ball it and then we'll tune it, cheat and then get caught and get banned from NASA forever. Got it. Yes. Oh, no, you won't get banned. It's just somebody's going to have to spend 50 bucks to protest you, and then I think you're going to have to pay them $50 and then a fine. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. That's so, not bad. We could do that. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That's that's it. Or, you know, basically have Matt and Dave tell you to just not do that again. Yeah. <laughs> after yeah. a certain after a certain local team did mm. a very low ball dyno pull on one of their cars mm. and then showed up blowing the doors off of everybody. What happened? <laughs> uh, Anyways, yeah. That's freaking rad, though. How yeah. Cook's stepping up. I, yeah, I, that is I awesome. Hope, uh, hope if you are, yeah, so this year is going to be the eighth annual six hour. It is not July 1st and 2nd, because that has already happened. No, it is August 1st and 2nd. Race starts at 6 p.m. on the 1st, goes to midnight. Uh, yeah, we're going to be running the Outer Loop at UMC. Always a fun one. It is great to watch it like at night, especially if you can get out to the backside of the track because it is just dark. I'm not sure if the Tooele County Fair is going to be going on, but pretty much every year prior to this it has been. So around 10 p.m., they shoot off fireworks. So you can see racing and fireworks all in one sitting. It's perfect. Yep. And I may or may not be calling commentary for either NASA Utah or for Toby and Bruno. So nice. Got to talk to Matt, see if uh, him and Dave want me to do commentary again, which would be awesome. I liked doing it last year, so would have been even better if I had some non-reluctant people coming to join me up in the booth, nah. or if Bruno would actually have rapped for me, mm. either or. Uh. But anyway, so that is that. Uh, we had a shit ton of racing over the weekend, which is why mm. I did not pull myself off of the couch. Mm. Uh, we had IndyCar returning to Indy Motor Speedway. For a road course race. Mm. Yeah, uh, it was the first road course outing for the new Aero Screen, which was, you know, proved to be a, a bit of a safety. It's two steps forward for safety, one step back because airflow is a bit of a problem. Ah, Minor lovely. issue. Ah. Uh, yeah, it was uh, pretty warm, so some of the drivers were complaining a bit. <sighs> yeah, they're but, just um, in 200 mile an hour ovens, basically. Yeah, uh, but I mean, they've got yeah. like, you know, they have provisions they have drinks bottles they have something to force air at least on the top of their head and don't they all wear cool suits these days anyways uh not as great of a cool suit as you would in like a sports car right because there's no yeah there's really no cooler yeah yeah i mean it's it's bigger than an f1 car but it's still not a big thing so yeah. anyway um yeah this was the first time that indycar and nascar were doing a double header mm. so yeah indycar and the Xfinity series got uh, America's Day. And then the Cup series took uh, Sunday. Mm -hmm. But as for IndyCar, they were on the, uh, the road course. Uh, a lot of strategy went out the window because it was so hot. A lot of people were just going to try and do a two-stop race. Did not happen. So, And then a safety car that involved Oliver Askew just coming out of the last turn, just lighting them up and not being able to catch it and hitting the wall. That safety uh, car kind of screwed over a lot of people, which is pretty much anybody in a Penske. Hmm. So, yeah, not a great, not a great weekend for the captain, to be nah. perfectly honest. Especially was this the, the first race back. Was this the first race? This is the second race back. Second race. Okay, yeah. So gotcha. they, they raced at Texas Motor Speedway, where uh, rookie Renus VK, he's Dutch. Ooh. He had a terrible outing at Texas Motor Speedway. He crashed twice on the weekend. Ah. This weekend, he started 18th and he finished 5th. Nice! Ooh, yeah. Wow. And uh, this race had only ever had two winners. They've done it six years. So it was Will Power has won three. 
Um, John Gerard. What the, why can't I remember his goddamn name? Isn't that the guy from Ricky Bobby? It is, but there is actually there is a legit NASCAR driver, Simon Pagano. Simon yeah, Pagano. Simon Pagano. He looks like John, John Gerard. Gerard, and it is yeah. hilarious. Yes. Um. Anyway, yeah, he is. He won the other ones. Uh, he pipped Scott Dixon like at the very end of the race, like the last half lap. He got around Dixon, but uh, yeah. This year, not so much. Dixon was on a fucking rocket ship and ended hmm. up taking the win by. 20 seconds holy crap so he's driving a mercedes then <laughs> right yeah yeah it took a 20 second lead 20 second win over graham ray hall and third place simon pagino mm. yep so uh yeah that's that was awesome it was a fun race to watch you know um it is a little the road course is a little different than the last time formula one was there they're not spitting them out in the middle of turn two nice yeah, they're actually like forcing them through another little part of the snake pit infield, and then right. yeah, so and it's then back on there. Nice. Yeah, so not nearly as much of the uh, the super aggressive and insane nine degree banked turns. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, yeah, like I shit you not, like people are talking about how extreme Zandvoort is with like eighteen degrees, and prior to that, yeah, we all remember the two thousand five Grand Prix, that farce. Yeah, that boringness where half the teams ran. Six cars took the grid. <laughs> yeah, good old tire wars. Good God, times. Right? Well, hey, man, sometimes you maybe want to partner with somebody who is supplying tires to yeah. a series that exclusively runs on one continent and at yeah. one place in particular. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, so, yeah, there was that. Um, Chris, I don't think anybody is going to be trying to do – what Jason Harward did last year, do the Iron Man at the six hour, just do it oh, by himself. By himself. Yeah, he did it. It was nice. It was fucking nuts. But wow. uh and the brakes glow going into turn one, turn five, and thirteen. Mm-hmm. So those are the places where you can really see him real good. And uh, I will say turn five, you can get a lot closer to the track than you can at like one. So just a heads up just in case. Uh, Anyway, uh, the Xfinity series, they were also on the road course, which is my favorite thing, watching those big fucking cars try to do a road course. It's so awesome. Oh, yeah. And they did the whole stage thing. And, you know, there was a car that had, like, stand for the anthem on its hood. And during the last restart of the race, it looked like it was standing still Mm. because it just got fucking left. Ah. And this was, like, the last few laps were legitimately insane. It was A.J. Allmendinger, Austin Sindrick, Justin Haley, Noah Gragson, and Chase Briscoe in a five-way fight for the win. Nice. And they are just, like, you come through, you come off the front straight, you duck down to the infield, and then there's this little chicane. They were hitting the first like curb and it was knocking them sideways. They were going sideways over the other part, wow. hitting the outside curbing and straightening out. Like it was so nuts to watch five this. way, a five yeah. way battle. And Chase Briscoe held <clears throat> everybody off, and it was wow. like he made a big move into turn one. Like uh, Almondinger like went down to block him going into one, but was like, "There's no way he's going to try going any further than this." Right. Briscoe is just like, okay, send it. Yeah. And he got the pass and he made it stick. And it was really important because Chase Briscoe is an Indiana native and he had a buddy who was a security guard at the Speedway. Mm-hmm. And he went there for like some sort of like a sprint race or something. And his buddy was like, oh, well, yeah, just come on in. Like, do you want to go out there and actually kiss the bricks? That's and Chase awesome. was like, no, I want to earn it. Yeah. I, on the other hand, will never earn it, but no. I have kissed the bricks. Ah, so, you have. Yep. Ah. Yes, I have. It's awesome. Uh, it is awesome. And by the way, go if you're ever in Speedway, go to the museum. It's like 15 bucks to get in. Mm. And if you ask nice, you can go into the basement and see like the archives and everything. So That's like, rad. It's insane. Rad. Also, the core sample they did before their most recent repave, where they just took like a giant like core sample all the way down and you can see everything down to the original bricks. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So that's sweet. Oh yeah. 
anyway, uh, then in the Cup Series, the Brickyard 400 slash Big Machine Hand Sanitizer 400 or whatever the hell it was, <laughs> uh, it was uh, complete with stages at this point in my race weekend. I could not watch any more. My brain nice. was not wanting to deal with that. So I had to watch some highlight stuff. And uh, yeah, uh, something very poetic happened. Ryan LaJoy was running the Trump 2020 car. Oh, boy. And there was a big wreck on pit lane. He was one of six cars involved who had to retire from the race due to damages. Oh, maybe that'll happen in real life, too. Some God, race, race one, retirements. One can only hope. But he's going to be see. running that livery a few more times because oh. uh, some... Who's... How? I just... I don't... Eh, you know, is, like, who's paying for that? It's, uh, Patriots know. of America Political Action Council. Lovely. Yeah. Yep. So yeah. That's how that works. Yep. So there it is. And I just think it's hilarious because he issued a statement last week after they announced they're running delivery. He's like, with an estimated 75 million NASCAR fans out there, I was surprised that about 15 million of those fans are not registered voters. Oh, oh God. Yeah. I don't understand yeah. why you're running that livery trying to get people to come out in November, but whatever. If the yeah. check clears, I guess yeah. run it. Which it uh, did. It came in gold bricks and e dead babies. Yes. Gold <laughs> spray painted bricks. Yeah, that's uh, it's lovely. Yeah, I just, I can't, I'm sorry. I can't watch NASCAR anymore. The whole period thing and yeah, the stages you know, all the state yeah whatever they're called yeah, the I, I, I call them periods because they're just horrible times of the race <laughs> it really is but uh, i mean at least at least when they're doing because they did the stages thing on for the road course race yeah but it was still like i mean it's hilarious you're watching like a 3500 pound thing yeah, that was never to. meant to do this yeah try and and when they do it's fucking hilarious and the yeah. racing yeah, we is watched always that one yeah. yeah. See, so, I would watch Road Course. NASCAR and Road oh, Course is the best. I love oh, it. Dude, like the Roval race yeah. is amazing. Yeah. But anyway, uh, back but just to, like the, the freaking circles and yeah, the ovals. Like, I, no, I yeah, can't do it. But I mean, I, I will say it was really awesome because these guys were going, like they were coming out of turns two and four, like sliding sideways. Right. Like it was just, fucking mm, insane. Just <laughs> you know. giving it everything they could. I yep. love it. Uh, let's see. Kevin Harvick in the uh, Bush car took the win uh nice. denny hamlin blew a tire with seven laps to go oh. which took him out of contention but he wasn't the only one who had uh, tire issues eric jones alex bowman the showman ryan newman and william byron all had tire issues the first three that i mentioned there wow good year. The first come on two, yeah the first two that i mentioned they were taken out of the race and uh ryan newman and william byron they were just kind of hindered by it their cars mm. had damage but they were still able to continue and then uh, real quick uh the big wet president this morning oh, yeah. on, a, on a twitter rant yep including It'll... he's wondering if uh bubba wallace was going to apologize to all those great nascar drivers and officials uh, who stood by his side and were willing to sacrifice everything for him only to find out that the whole thing ever was just Another hoax that flat that and flag decision has caused lowest ratings ever. Well, first Fox Sports came out and said that actually NASCAR ratings are up eight percent. Yep. So there's that. Yeah, and he uh, all caps ever and hoax was all caps as well. Yeah, in that tweet, and then so. of course. yeah, and then Bubba Wallace because I mean he is just a very eloquent fellow when faced with this sort of horseshit. He put out mm -hmm. a great little statement. No, your words and actions will always be held to a higher standard than others. You have, it's, I'm not going to read it, but it is just, I mean, he's basically just saying like, yeah, man, like you could do better, but also the fuck off. Yeah. NASCAR Plus, came out was where like, we are behind him a hundred percent. So because it was also NASCAR that was like, who did yeah. this? You know? Yeah, like NAS they, yeah. Bubba, like, as we talked about a couple weeks ago, this wasn't some Jesse Smollett thing. Like no. Bubba didn't do this. No. Somebody on his team saw it. Yep. alerted NASCAR, and then the president of NASCAR called Bubba as Bubba was going to dinner with yeah. some other drivers Yeah, and let him know. But, like, even looking at the picture, like, that's a weird knot to put on a... It's that, a noose! It is yeah, a full-on yeah. noose! Yeah, it but it's been noose. there since October. Yeah, it's been there a good while, but, but yeah, it's, like, it's like... that's not that's not good! Like, no! So yeah, is that like, the only knot that person learned how to tie in scouts? Seriously. I mean, holy cow, uh, that person needs help. I think that's a, a cry for help right there. Right. <laughs> 
But then I hate, uh, I hate my job. Seriously. But then uh <clears throat> yeah, our alleged billionaire in chief uh yeah. called Bubba to apologize. Yeah, for the hoax. Yeah. But then here's here's great. Uh blonde press secretary of the week. Oh yeah. Uh said this. The FBI has concluded that this was not a hate crime, and he believes it would go a long way if Bubba came out to acknowledge this as well, she told reporters who were asking about. Good God. Wow. Yeah. Are you, like, somebody, like, you, you cannot defend this man. No. Like, you cannot defend any of these people. I don't, I don't get how anybody's, like, in his, you know like in his management, his PR division has just got to no, be on I, suicide watch. Every tweet, <laughs> every sure. tweet. Yeah. <clears throat> like, and it's just like, I see Obama tweet and I'm like, you know, I'm not, I'm not very political and I'm not affiliated I mean, either way, but I'm like, yeah. oh, I remember when leadership had eloquence yeah, and could and speak just, to something constructively. Yeah. I miss like, those days. Yeah. Like if we really want to get into it, we haven't had like a truly great transformative, like shit got real different real quick since FDR. FDR was a traitor to his class. Like he did so much. And then since then, everybody has been trying to play it down the middle or at least in their lane. So yeah. yeah. Anyway, on to much nicer things. Uh, There was an IMSA race, two hours and 40 minutes. Oh, I missed that. Dang. I love that. Yeah. That was uh, end of the day on uh, Saturday. It what, was uh, right. what channel is that aired on now? Uh, it? It's on NBCSN. Oh, good. Okay. Or on the NBC Sports app. With Lee Diffie calling the race or your favorite Australian? No. No, no not Lee Diffie. It's uh, Calvin oh. Fish and some pudding brained moron named Brian who oh, kept okay. saying that he wanted to be in one of the Cadillacs and not one of the turbocharged DPIs because he wanted that smooth power delivery. Mm, so but he's it's a like, Cadillac back driver i don't know like he, they say he's a former racing driver but his name does not leap to mind so i don't know where uh, the fuck they found him like nice. i know calvin fish like he's a pudding yeah. brained idiot but like he yeah. at least i can at least point to things that calvin has done and i'm like okay it's still calvin fish but it wasn't so, jeff kramer like they usually have jeff kramer call those no races, well i think i think kramer might have been there anyway i ended up Anyways. like muting the tv and getting Smart. imsa radio which is radio lama like hindy like, yeah. like everybody you want calling the race because they yeah. give you information. Uh, yeah, they, they know what they're talking about. Exactly. But anyway, yeah. uh, Mazda took the win. Mazda was in a class of their own. Nice. Like they were like a second faster on their fastest lap than wow. the Acuras than the Cadillacs. It's kind like, of the, the theme this weekend, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like Mazda has had a problem with the longer races, but yeah. the shorter races, they fucking dominate. Yeah. So then in GTD, Lexus with their RCF GT3 cars, which is a thing you can buy. Yeah. Beat out the NSX GT3s. Cool. To take one and two on the podium. And nice. uh, Townsend Bell was calling a race up in Indy. He was calling the Xfinity car race. And then he had to get on a plane and fly down. But because there were storms, like, at Daytona, they had to, di- and there was pressurization problem. They had to divert to Jacksonville. So him and another driver and somebody else, they rented a car and drove from Jacksonville to Ooh, that's good. the track, and they made it in time. Originally, it was oh. going to be like, well, we should be able to get Townsend in for his stint, right? But yeah, so that was hilarious. But, I wish uh, they set up cameras on that car. That would have been that's. They probably set a world record for that run. Right Aim faster, Sullivan. They kept tweeting because Townsend <clears throat> would text them, and they would just yeah. tweet updates. It was just like, all right, well here they are. And finally, when yeah, like the broadcast, they were just like, ah, oh, we should be like fifteen minutes to go. Aim faster, Sullivan's just like, they've made the Daytona turn off. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Open so the was, gates. Exactly. So that was awesome. And then. The C8 Corvette got its first win. Nice. And it represents Corvette Racing's 100th win on U.S. soil. Holy cow. That's yeah. cool. A little yep. bit of history there. Exactly. So, yeah, that yeah. was uh, Oliver Gavin. He has and... pedigree now. Mm. <laughs> now. Yeah, yeah, right. God, just now, showing up the, at the, Le the, the C8. The C8 now has pedigree. Oh, gotcha. Oh, yeah. Although it was, I was really pulling for a team thickness, the, uh, the RLL big mates to uh, to pull it off. What do they drive? What is that? Oh, uh, 
the BMW M8 GTE. Oh yeah, the, big the ginormous. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. I love those. Or as I like to call them, Team Thickness. Team Thickness. Yeah, yep. the big old the land yachts. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. All right. So the thing that Brandon has come out of the woods for. Oh man. Well, just going along that theme of domination. I mean, let's just oh, jump right into Formula One, shall so we? First, it's been like 240 days or some ridiculous ass number. Yes, since we have they, had Formula One. Correct, because they canceled the Australian Grand Prix the night before the Australian Grand Prix. So mm-hmm. that, that was a that was a thing. So and I remember arguing with Greg Valdez about it. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, whatever. It's back. It's back. It and is, they, it is glorious. The first eight races and they're doing them in Europe, mainland Europe, so they don't have to travel around as much. Everybody's yeah. getting tested. Oh yeah. Um I think even like three times, four times uh, during a, a race week. So, I mean. Yeah, it's and I think it's random testing too. So, it's yeah. not like, all yeah. right, come here so they can try to hide something. It's just like Formula yep. One goes up. Hey, come here. Come here, swab, and you're good. Yeah, no. It was, and, yeah, this was at Austria, the Austrian Grand Prix at the Red Bull Ring, which mm-hmm. usually Max Verstappen is, is – I think he's won, he won the last one. Yeah, he won the last one with that hero move. With the hero and, move on our, our boy Leclerc. So. Yep. And he's done really good there. Yep. <clears throat> but uh, anyways, Mercedes, holy cow. I mean, uh, in, this in was far free, and away. It was them. Yeah. Like, free practice. They were dominating. And like, as a Ferrari fan, I was truly gutted to see like the, the preseason testing form that Ferrari came with that everybody's like, holy crap, they're two seconds off Mercedes was real. It's real. <laughs> oh they are my a God. full two seconds slower they are a second slower than themselves last year i sent out a tweet after q2 when seb didn't make it and charles barely made it into q3 yeah i'm like i can hear my buddy screaming and he lives 30 miles away (laughs) (laughs) i was just gutted and it's it's all the ferrari clients cars too alfa romeo sucks haas sucks i mean it's like like, i mean it's it's one thing to say Ferrari just doesn't have it, but I mean, they just, everybody's trying to say, Oh, well, let's wait till like Hungary before we no. can start. No, 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 no. You have a literal direct comparison to something that happened last year. Yeah. You can apply yeah. like, Oh, they're still in Melbourne yeah. spec. Yeah. But they're also in 2020 spec. Yeah. So, exactly. uh, yeah. It's yeah. the same car. Same. Well, it's just, they had to cheat to be fast and to compete with Mercedes. And that's where yeah. it all stems, right? They had that trick oiling system that they were burning yeah. the extra oil that the they FIA investigated them. Assist. Yeah. Like a two-stroke baby. Running like that two-stroke baby hit that NOS. <laughs> Give me but that like, premix. And the FIA never released the details of that investigation. But ever since that investigation, Ferrari was slow. Like yeah, halfway through towards the end of last terrible. season. Yeah. They started sucking. And that's because they like, <laughs> And they didn't have the straight line speed this 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 time either. But yeah, as as far as qualifying news goes, yeah, that was it. Vettel didn't yeah. make it. It's the first time in his career he started in tenth position or worse. I think is something like that. Is, yeah, or like since, there. yeah, since the Toro Rosso Minardi days. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. even then, yeah, yeah. yeah even so then, that, at least that thing showed signs of life. This was yeah. just like I saw somebody say like uh, Charles wound up finishing second, and somebody said. Charles drove a shoebox to second place. Yeah, <laughs> he did. He literally, yeah. and the only reason he did was the, they got lucky. Like they were lucky because oh, yeah, they, they were lucked. still running. That was, like, it, it was truly the first race of the season because the attrition yeah. was just horrible. Nine cars out of Nine. the 20 car field retired. Nine times. If you can quote what movie that, tell me what movie that, that uh, quotes from, I will give you a free lunch. So, okay. Nine times anybody i'm gonna go to the youtube and see if anybody knows all right well nine I'll, times i'll jump back to this so yeah anyways I mean, yeah like mercedes was far and away the fastest all weekend they would have yeah. qualified one and two but somehow red bull found 360 degree camera footage of yeah max or not max of lewis barely lewis. ignoring a yellow flag after valtteri yeah. went off correct it was a valtteri spin it was the last yeah the opportunity. last lap. Yep. yeah last lap of qualifying so it was really kind of keen of, of Valtteri yeah. to spin at that moment. But yeah, it was true. Like Hamilton did not lift off. They yeah. initially investigated and said he was clear. But and then, then Red Bull threw a protest. Yeah. The second one the that they did. Yep. And so. then they, they won that one. And I'm glad they did because he didn't lift. Everybody yeah. else had, he had to lift. To, yeah. yeah. 
Well, this will not be the first time that we talk about a Lewis penalty. No, and in fact, nope. there's a lot of deja vu in this race. Seriously. Sure. Oh, anyway, man. Uh, I mean, Williams was looking like they might have had something. Might have, yeah. If Latifi didn't spook himself after that, after that crash in uh, free practice three, he might have been a yeah. little bit better. But, I yeah. mean, Russell was so close. He was there. With what happened in the race, with everybody dropping out. So, uh, I mean... I mean, we lost Ricardo. We lost both Haas's in terms of Magnussen and Root Roman Grosjean. We lost. Yeah. We lost Kimi Raikkonen in spectacular fashion when he's Kvyat Ricardo. Kvyat Ricardo. I mean, Stroll. So, yeah, yeah, Stroll went out with the Mercedes sensor issue, which came to haunt Mercedes themselves. Yeah. I love. I love during the race, like the command of Valtteri and Lewis was like, <laughs> "Stay off the fucking curbs. You're gonna break the transmission." Because that's the thing: the sensors on the transmission yeah. were getting so shaken. <laughs> But they were getting like the just, situation critical. Like yeah, they just had to slow Valtteri, down. it's James. Yeah, James, it's James. <laughs> it and was, then they tell Valtteri towards like the last couple laps, yours is worse than the other car. Please, <laughs> like, please stop. Yeah, please don't yeah, go on the curbs. Whenever James has to come on the radio, he has that energy of an exacerbated dad who just yes. lost sight of a toddler yes. who was holding a fork. I know that voice. <laughs> I know that voice all too well. That's yeah. every day for me. <laughs> Just trying to hold it together and then suddenly, like, oh, God. Yeah. So, anyways, with Hamilton's penalty, it moved him back to starting fifth, right? Didn't you drop to fifth? I, think, I thought fourth? it was only third. Third? I thought it was just like a one grid place penalty or something. Oh, yeah. and it moved uh, Max up to Max, second. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Yeah. And it was, I mean, it was looking like it was going to be uh, a race, but then people started dropping out max yeah. went down early oh he went down super early and he had this like the false it was the anti whatever the stall. anti-stall yeah like yeah, the, the car, anti-stall like he couldn't change the settings the car kept trying to go into anti-stall again it was probably the curbs i mean the curbs there are nuts it's it's a good thing they only race there once a year oh wait they're going there Uh-oh. again this weekend hey oh it's no gonna be- the Austrian Grand Prix, very V2.20, 2.0. Yeah, no, it'll yeah. be. It'll and we be had that. safety car on lap 26. Oh, my gosh, yes. Hey, Mag, like his brakes failed and he just went off at yeah. four or whatever it was. After that brilliant move, but it wasn't it Lando that put the move on him or who? Someone, no, I thought it oh, was, it was uh, Ricardo or someone. I can't remember, but it was a uh, No, it was pass. Ocon. Ocon, Esteban, he's back. Yes. Yeah, he's back. Esteban Ocon. Yeah, and he drove yeah. really well. Yeah, I but mean, uh, yeah, God, yeah. And, but I Mercedes, mean, Mercedes was in a class on their own, just like every other race that you watch this weekend. Mm-hmm. They were up twelve seconds on second place when that first it was insane. Car. Yeah, no one would have touched them. No one. Yeah. But then, like, we're just gonna talk about the last because I mean, yeah, so many people went out. George Russell, that was uh, heartbreaking. They would have got their first championship point in the last what five years? No, they got he a point got last two- year. He would have got 10th. Oh, he did get a point last year. Okay. He didn't get the point. Oh, Kubica it was got Robert, the point. Robert Kubica, who's yes. in the DTM now. Yes. That's yes. Right. But anyway, yeah. so after just – after Kimmy's wheel yeah. just went home to mama. Yeah, yeah. They set up with a 10-lap sprint to the end. And we had Lando Norris get fresh tires. We had – uh, Alex yep. Albon get new tires, but the two yeah. Mercedes stayed out, and so did uh, Sergio Perez. Yeah, Sergio Perez. He was just really banking that the uh, the yeah. pink Mercedes could hold on on just pace, but which which they have the pace. They are fast. They're faster than Ferrari. I mean, they're right I there mean, with Red Bull. I they mean, have the pace, and imagine if they had another like Checo level driver. Yeah, if they had Stroll. another driver. Period. I mean, I instead mean, of Stroll, Stroll son. is talented. Like he's he had his... some. He's had Flashes. some good result. Like he should, he can do this. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, but, but they fell to that sensor issue as well. Like yeah. his, he they hit the curbs too much and yep. goodbye shifting. So yep. yeah, but just, man, that was that was a oh. that was a fantastic end. What a race! And oh yeah, those last well, ten laps. It was yeah. Valtteri, Hamilton, Sir, and, and it was I mean Perez, and then but oh, what a masterclass, Albon. I mean, we're talking about it, Chris. You brought it up there. I mean, you know, Hamilton, Albon did a just a master move on the outside, I think turn seven or something, turn six. Yeah. There's not a lot, there's only 10 turns in the whole track, but yeah, uh, I think it was a uh, six is where, yeah. and yeah, like Albon but he tried was, to go to the outside. Yeah. And he did. And he was clearly ahead and he within was, the field of view. I mean, his rear yeah. tire hit, hit Hamilton's front left. Yeah. And so was, that is this, you know? And so, yeah. And, and so, 
I think it wouldn't have been as harsh of a penalty if Albin didn't spin. Yeah. And, and if it's... it were somebody other than, like, if the the Mercedes were swapped, if it was Terry hitting Albin, I don't think it would have been as bad. But everybody still has that sour taste in their mouth from Last Brazil. Year. Yeah, where Hamilton did the same thing. But I do I do think, I mean, Albin's young, and you could see yeah. it. He didn't need to do that right He then. didn't. Oh, you he could hear Brundle to. just like, oh, patience. Yeah. Patience, Alex. I mean, he had the tire. He had the speed. Wait yeah. till the DRS comes up, and it's an easy, cheesy pass. And yeah. He, but I know he wanted to try. I know he he's wanted. thinking I can get Valtteri if I can if I can do this. So. Yeah. So that was he was he was playing for the win, not playing yep. for a podium. Yeah. So. Which I like. I like that. It's, he's he's got some talent. He just needs to stay away from Lewis Hamilton. So, Seriously, you know. just stay away. But yeah. then, so that got Lewis a five second penalty. And five then second penalty. Checo got himself a five second penalty for speeding in pit lane. Yes. So he now did. suddenly. But that's he got that after Charles Leclerc put a masterclass move on him too yeah. because Charles also went in for fresh tires so that's the only way Ferrari was hanging out they had new tires good yeah, grippy like, tires as well so. <laughs> yeah them and their shoe boxes yeah total but, crap shoe boxes but yeah so yeah. we had so yeah. Valtteri Hamilton was still in second position but he had the five second penalty yep Charles Leclerc and then who was right behind Sergio Perez. Lando. Lando Norris. I freaking he, love this kid. He sends it up the inside on three. He gets yes. around him yes. and then is told that Lewis has a five second penalty. And, he's and it's 5. like 0.8 out or something yeah, like it's that. It's like yeah. five, five point seconds, 5.7 seconds to Lewis. He has a yeah. five second penalty. And you have two push, laps. Maximum push. Yes, for three laps. Wasn't it like three laps that he had yeah. to do? Yeah. And the, he had to do. <laughs> And the last, last lap, lap, oh. lap 71. Ah, yes. The meme lord himself. Yes. Lando goes. Gets it. And his, so he gets, he gets the fastest lap. He closes yes. the gap. It ends up being 4.7. So he gets his first podium. Yep. And the lap time he set was the same as Max's fast lap last year. Exactly to the thousandth of yeah. a second. Oh, but, just... Yeah. Just so, exactly what McLaren needed. So now this bank in Bahrain's like, oh, sweet. We just made 20% on this investment. Sweet. Right there. Yeah. And then got to be doing it all again next weekend. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And so they're coming back to Austria. I think there might be some track layout changes. I've heard, you know, Martin Brundle saying that he would like to see a chicane added here or something like that to kind of like, differentiate I mean, it. It's one of those, I need to take a look at some like, alternate layouts and what else they could possibly do at the rental rink, but there's, there's nothing. There's not a lot. No, no, no there's also, not a lot. Yeah. And also if you're kind of wondering what an F1 race would be on like something kind of comparable to what you could see out at UMC, Red Bull ring is about the size of either the East or the West track. Yeah. I was going to say it's like the East track. Yeah. Except it has the East track has more turns. <laughs> yeah. The East track. Yeah. So like turn count wise, it's about West but as yeah. far as like elevation and everything, uh, it's more like the east. East, yeah. But yeah, so like that's kind of. I mean, it's not really identical, but you get kind of a good idea. And I'm not sure if uh, the DAS really played a huge effort into it Mercedes. It was never on camera. I don't even yeah. know if they used it because every time they were talking about it, there was never any of this action. So yeah. the DAS was there. I don't know if they used it. Because it yeah. would have been during the the safety car. There were two safety cars, so yeah. Yeah, yeah I was going to ask about that. Yeah, so we, I don't know if it really came into effort, but I will say this: P10, Sebastian Vettel, P11, Nicholas Latifi, uh, Williams rookie. Right he there, he was not. He was not close enough to Vettel for it to really do anything. But no. but George I mean, Russell, who was before all the shit hit the fan, was in twelfth or eleventh, and he yeah. would have been promoted up to eighth. Man. Yeah. It would have been insane. And I mean, yeah. all, I mean, and with Sebastian, did you see what Sebastian said after the race as they were coming in? He was happy. He only spun the one time. He said <laughs> on the radio to his team, as he's driving up, <clears throat> we have a lot of work to do. This car sucks is really what he yeah. said. I love but, the gloves off metal. I mean, no, like, and it's, I mean, the, we can have the argument, <clears throat> like, was it him or was it the Red Bull that got him well, all that, those championships? And it's like, yeah. but I mean, he's not, like it's not any of us yeah like we can't like you know he can actually like say no 
this thing fucking blows. Yeah, but I do think he sealed his fate last year in Brazil as well. Oh, yeah. Like he didn't get a contract from Ferrari when he when he freaking ran into Charles. So yeah, I, mean, I just really wish Ferrari just would have said like, no, we're not giving him another contract because we can't have him. Yeah, fighting with who is clearly the number one driver. We can't. But they did. That. They did what Ferrari does and poorly managed the entire situation. <laughs> yes, and just totally screwed him and and all the fans yeah. over. So, and I will say this: like everybody was like, "Ah, oh, a German going to Ferrari. It's going to be. It's going to be the return of the glory days." No, what happened no. with Schumi was such a hyper specific series of events. Yeah, like it was never going to happen. Yeah, like Ross Brun. Yeah. I mean, you had you had the dream team. Yeah, and you, you had Stefano de Manicali. I mean, they were. Yeah. You had people to shield Michael and the F1 team from the rest yeah. of Ferrari. Yeah. So they're just like, we're gonna do our thing. So yeah. if you'll excuse us. Oh yeah, Jean Todt, Jean Jean Todt, the guy who's yeah. now the FIA. That I mean, he yeah. and uh, Ross Brown. That was the dream team. So, yeah. I mean, but uh, yeah. anyway, so that and is so now there's. There's calls for uh, Italian Where's Waldo, as I like to call him, <laughs> Benotto. Oh, uh, yeah. Benotti, whatever, uh, to be fired. Because uh, the car is such shit. And the it's car just is like, fucking trash. Like, and it, Italy loves their Ferrari, and if their Ferrari is no good, then the, yeah. the guy at the top gets his head chopped off, and that's what's happened to the last two guys, if we think yeah, about man. the F1 team. This is, yeah, this is a bit ridiculous. But, yeah. All right, well, we've got – we can go a little bit longer. I do want to touch on some of these fun little uh, – yeah, some shenanigans stuff. So in the shenanigans group, which uh, you can get into if you give us five dollars a month on Patreon, patreon.com slash cam automag, subscribe at the shenanigans level or better. I asked, what's a restaurant you've never eaten at but really want to? And we got some fun answers. Uh, let's see, Luke Dreyer, I'm sure I'll get roasted, but what is the wing place with the black diamond sauce? Time to take them off the list of places to eat. Uh, that is the wing coop. And then he says two more for the list. I've never had White Castle or Waffle House. And then the White Castle thing led to a bit of a disagreement between uh, Devin and Chirp. Devin, I'm not sure what White Castle he's eating at because he described the uh, White Castles, White Castle burgers as, uh, Jesus Christ. What happened? When last I looked at this, there were like seven responses. Now it's up to 22. Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Devin Creasy says, I don't know why you like eating flavorless twice frozen meat that's covered in slime. You have some weird taste. And yeah, no, like it's like I, I've i never had that problem at White Castle. So like I'm really thinking you need to go like he says he's eaten at five different ones. I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's you, Devin. Like maybe it's a you problem. Because I've never had that problem. Like, so a lot of other people have not had this problem. But anyway, um, let's see. Continuing on, uh, AJ uh, wants to try the wing coop. He's heard many tales and must witness this for his own eyes, which is a thing that we will actually be doing. Brandon Coon, Waffle House is legit, and the coop is our gathering place of choice for many reasons. And then, let's see, uh, Chirp, there's some Junkyard Burger Shack down in Oregon that uh, James, Dahl, and he have on their list. Oh, Chirp also said Dodge Chrysler minivans for the worst slash hateful vehicle. And then, skipping past all of that, oh, man, he's also, Devin's also kind of standing for Sweet Baby Ray's, which is, I mean, it's a thing. Um, yeah, no, that, that is it. As far as uh, restaurants you want to eat at but have yet to. Guys, do you have anything for that before we get out of here real quick? I got one. Okay. There is now one in LA, and I want to go do it. Coco Ichibania. Ichibania. I can't fucking talk. Yeah? It's a Japanese restaurant that we now have a, a U.S. version, whatever. It's like, it's like a curry house. Mm. Let's go to LA. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in. Yeah. So, I mean, I'd love to try, like, Momofuku, David Chang's restaurant. That seems, mm. like, fucking legit. But, again, have to go to L.A. or New York for it. Oh, the other one um, is, I know the name of it. I can't think of it right now. But Salt Bay's restaurant. He has, like, six or seven locations. Oh, God, yeah, that's... Uh, what the fuck is the name of it? I don't know, but there's one in Miami and 
somebody was yeah. disputing the bill yes. and got escorted out by the cops. Yep, that was good. That was hilarious. Uh, oh, sad. Chris can't come on Wednesday. No. But whatever, bud. We'll see you on the weekend for, for NASA stuff. And then, all right, I do want to hit one of these shenanigan stories. And which one is this one? All right, this one is relevant to all of us. Two lawmakers urge Utah to allow curbside home delivery of beer during the coronavirus. Yes. Yes. Yep. Yeah, like you can do anything with like click list or grocery delivery, but can't do beer, which I can kind of understand because it's like, uh, kind of need to check ID for that. And, right. you know, there are a lot of easy ways to get around that sort of stuff. But uh, Senator Derek Kitchen and Representative Joel Briscoe uh, sent a letter directly to Governor Special Helmet urging him to suspend the state law temporarily and allow customers to purchase alcoholic beverages that are available at grocery stores through curbside pickup and home delivery. So, I mean, it not makes that. sense if you want us to stay home and stay safe. Why not let us do that? So, For real. Yep, hopefully that happens. I highly doubt it since yeah. Utah Maybe Republicans here. have led, have decided that they really just want to run back the Herbert ears by nominating Cox for governor. So, ugh. anyway, there it is, folks. That is the news. That is the episode here on this lovely Monday evening. Brandon, I want to thank you for coming out of the woods for this. Yeah, we'll I'll be have on you. next week, too. Here we go. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, you say that awesome. now. No, it's 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 real. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, more okay, than one. Well, what about tomorrow? It's Tuesday. Yes. Yes. Oh, no, not tomorrow. It doesn't work for me. But yeah. <laughs> But no. next, week, next week, I'll be here with you talking about these things and more. But, but Brandon, will you be on for Twitch Tuesday tomorrow? Oh, is that what Zach's talking about? Sure, why not? Oh, okay, I mean, sure. Yeah, uh, I'll try. I was just talking about neglect. But, right, you know. that's well, all yeah, I no, know. We're not, getting a, we're not getting away from that. But no, no. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. just my modus operandi. Yeah, I'll try to get on. That'd be fun. Okay, yeah. Like I said, 7 p.m., 7 to 9, Twitch yes. Tuesdays, GT Sport. Twitch.tv slash Cam Auto Mike if you want to watch and do what Chris is going to do and harass us. Uh, follow us on all of our social medias. We're at Cam Auto Mike on a lot of them. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter now because racing is happening, so I can get spicy on that one. Uh, podcasts available wherever you get your podcasts. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, which is, I think, now their new deal. Like, okay. rate, review, subscribe. Just tape some Bluetooth speakers to the outside of your car and just drive slowly around. You know, let's get rowdy with it. Get weird. Uh, support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash camautomag. Any dollar amount is greatly appreciated, especially in these tough times. But five bucks a month gets you into the super secret shenanigans shit posting Facebook group, which means you can see this podcast early. You get bonus content. I'll randomly send you things. You can join us for Twitch Tuesday because you'll actually know all of our gamer tags and all that stuff. So yeah, there you go. Patreon.com slash camautomag. Uh, get the hat that Zach is wearing or any of the aforementioned stuff I mentioned at the top of this episode. It's very comfy. Yep. Very, very awesome hats. Uh, CamAutoSwag.com, your home for official Cam merch. Support Steady Broke Clothing, our longtime sponsor, SteadyBroke.com. Use coupon code CamAuto15 at checkout. Save 15% off your entire order. And, guys, you have a week to win... The 7600 plus zine, which is all Corolla stuff from Eric Teddy. Uh, if you want to get one of these, I will post up a link to where you can buy it. Uh, shipping is going to take a minute because he is literally packing and shipping all the stuff from his apartment in Brooklyn. But uh, 100% of the proceeds go to Black Lives Matter. And we are giving this thing away. I want you to tell me a really awesome kick-ass story from a car meet. And I don't want to hear about like some fight that you saw or like some times where you shamed a dude into leaving the meet because he was driving some bunk piece of shit. No, I want like a good one where it was just like, yeah, me and the guys, we met up here and then we just like kicked it and had a good time Then we drove the Canyon and we just met at the bottom at Seven Eleven and just hung out in the parking lot. It was great. You know? We got some dudes to join us sort of thing. Like, you know, a good, positive, uplifting story, seeing as how we are in the midst of a shit quagmire. So. Yeah, that's if, an understatement, I think. Yeah, give me your best, most 
heartwarming hashtag wholesome tale from a car meet. And uh, yeah, I will send this thing out to you, plus some cam stickers, plus God only knows what else. So I'm, I have a basement full of random shit, as you can clearly see behind me if you're watching the stream. So there we go. Yeah, just let us know on social media, <laughs> mailbag at camautomag.com. There we go. Uh, guys, we're episode 272 of the CamCast, only 28 away from the Zach custody battle episode, oh, which is yes. totally happening. Are you coming, Brandon? Are, are you, are you going to fight for my custody? Hells yeah, I am. On episode 300. 300. So yep. who's it going to be? It's going to be Dave, Zach Turnage, Trent, Mike, Brandon. Is, is anyone else fighting for my I mean, I'm childhood? not necessarily... I mean, I'm not necessarily fighting for custody of you. you I'm really, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm here ruling. Okay. So right. I'm going to determine who your daddy really is. <laughs> hey, can, I, can I vote too? I want to I vote. No, you have no say in this. That's I have no works. say in this. Yeah, that's how No, he, uh, no, no, no. We have to humor the child. Uh, yes, right. Zach, I will take uh, your thoughts and feelings into consideration. Only in written I, form. I, I, I will make a list of the pros and cons of each person. Whoever wants Zach, I mean, I accept bribes, so <laughs> I'm on Venmo. Mike from Cam. Mm. Forgot what my cash Brandon, app is, but whatever. I'm ro- rooting for you. Yay. Please, please win my childhood. <laughs> Woo! Wow. We'll anyway. see what I can do. If the cigarettes are here, that's where I'll be. There we go. So episode 200. I, I will bring you some. <laughs> Excellent. God, just bring him a carton of Newports. <laughs> no, I, I, parliaments. I, I, dude, I was going to bring you some black cloves. Yeah, menthols. I have no idea what we're talking about, but okay. Anyway, for episode 272 of the CamCast, I have been Mike. I've been Zach. I've been Pizza Dad. Yay! Yay! Love you guys.